Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the early directories and search engines on the internet. Because if humans are going to be able to connect with their computers and their networks, they're going to have to have good human computer interfaces that tell them how to find things. Now, you remember Justin Hall was in 1990, at the end of 1993, was doing his links of, uh, from the underground and lists of cool shit, as he called it. Well, back in 1993, at the end of 93, when he started, there were really only about 130 real websites out there. But as you can see from this chart, uh, there it goes, you know, in 93. By 1994, there's 3,000 of them, and it goes up 100,000, 258 thousand. Uh, it goes up exponentially each year. And so for this exploding um, universe to be in any way useful, you had to have a simple human computer interface that would enable you to find what you wanted when you wanted. And without this tool, without this human interface with the network, this incredible paradise of the World Wide Web would simply be a jungle with no maps. You'd never be able to find where you were going. And so initially, after Justin Hall and a few geeks uh, started doing things in early 1994, others started doing a little bit more serious directories. These weren't really search engines. They were just hand compiling all the websites that they could find and you know, put them in a directory, almost like the old yellow pages of a phone book or the index of a book. And this one was done by uh, Tim Berners-Lee and his group. Uh, there were others that were done by NCSA Mosaic. That's the group uh, with Mark Andreessen that invented that uh, Mosaic browser. And so there they have the what's new list and it gets more and more sophisticated. But it's still, by the time you get into 100,000 websites, a little bit hard to navigate. Some people found um, ways to do specialty directories. Global News Navigator was one of them. Here's one about traveling and how to go on the road. And it would find things like mad Russian, you know, strange nights. And somebody would tell what to do there or how to cycle in South Africa. And eventually, by the end of 1994, there are a lot of companies getting into the business. About a year, the year that uh, Justin Hall did his links from the underground. There's Lycos, uh, a private company that's cataloging the internet. A little spider there, which shows if you look at the top of that spider, a spider or something that would crawl through the web and find things and bring it back. There was Alta Vista, there was Excite, uh, and you know, none of them were really that great. There was one kid, David Philo, uh, that's him on the left. He's from Lake Charles, Louisiana, and he got a degree in computer engineering from Tulane. And David Philo teamed up with his friend, Jerry Yang, the guy on the right. And they began doing something that was a little bit like Justin Hall's, it was just uh, Jerry and Dave's list of things. Welcome visitor. And that's a 1994 page that they do. And they're doing a list of things that they have found on the internet. Uh, David Philo has moved out to California from uh, New Orleans then. And eventually they take this uh, and they decide to make it yet another one of the search and directory uh, systems. It becomes known as Yahoo. Uh, that's because David Philo, like Jonathan Swift's book, Gulliver Travels, and Yahoo is a word in it for sort of the unsophisticated rubes. Uh, being from Lake Charles, I think he knew what a Yahoo was. They tried to register the name and they couldn't. Somebody else had taken it for something totally different. So they put an exclamation point on it and they registered the name. And then they decide, like everybody back then, you kind of reverse engineer the words you're using. So they said Yahoo stood for yet another hierarchical, official oracle. 
Mainly, it was people compiling directories, but you see there's a little search box there. Searches weren't considered that important. What was important was to be able to get the directories right. But as I said, things are growing exponentially. By 1998, you see it there, 2.4 million websites. Within a couple of years, there'd be 17 million websites. By the way, now we're up to 17, 1.7 billion uh, websites. But you can see that by the time you have 24 million or 10 million or 17 million websites, you're not going to be able to compile a directory by hand. And that leads us to what has to happen next in the, in the a directory and search business. And that's realizing that it cannot continue to be done by hand compiled directories.